Hey ladies and gents, it's Sam back doing another tips and tactics on a world of warplanes. And we're talking about today, we're going to be talking about maneuverability, uh, specifically uh, optimum airspeed. And uh, I don't think a lot of people know this. Some people might, some people don't. Some people are new to this game or they just don't care, whatever. Uh, I don't care. So, but uh, every airplane in the game has an optimum, optimum airspeed. Uh, for making a turn, and this is either heavy fighters, light fighters, uh, you know, attack uh, attacks, bombers, everything has an optimum airspeed. So if you want to get the absolute performance, best performance out of that aircraft, that's the speed you have to be at to get it to turn at that rate. So I'm playing the Yak, or the I'm doing using the Yak 3RD here uh, for this little uh, demonstration here, uh, and to find this number out. Uh, you need to go over here to the right hand side and you go click on the maneuverability and it pulls down a, a list of times rates uh, per, uh, miles per hour stall speeds and all that kind of stuff uh, so average time to turn 360 degrees is eight seconds optimum airspeed this is the number that we're looking at here is 221 miles an hour this is the number this is where your aircraft performs best at uh, in a in a turn so if you're at that or close to that and I mean I'm when I mean close I mean we're talking within 20 on each side of that number uh, that helps I mean so so that's the optimum speed for when you are making a turn uh, to get the eight seconds uh, in a 360 degree turn so remember that 221 miles an hour and you should look up on every craft so like the LA7 um, is 219 miles an hour uh, let's see like the 302 is 349 miles an hour that's the optimum speed that you want to be making your turns at make sense right so I'm gonna do I did a little video here just flipping around in the um, uh, in the training room to show you what I'm talking about uh, trying to keep that aircraft uh, in that essentially a power that, that that range that lets you turn as quickly as the plane can possibly turn um, you know, this isn't, of course, having to do with flaps. This doesn't do anything with equipment and pilot skills and all that stuff. This is just a straight-up number uh, for what uh, the, the, the airspeed that you need to be turning at to get the full performance uh, out of your aircraft. So I'll bring up the video for you guys. Check out quick. So like I said, we're gonna be doing a couple of these tonight, or a couple of these little videos, um, all hashing together to give you some tips and tricks on uh, uh, to get be more successful at World of Warplanes. All right, guys, back with the video with the maneuverability and the optimum airspeed. And I'm just going to do a couple of rolls and loops here, and I'm going to give you a kind of idea what I'm talking about. Now, there is essentially two kinds of... So you're either going to have a vertical or a horizontal. And I prefer the vertical mostly because um, it's easier to control your airspeed in the vertical than it is in the horizontal. Obviously, the higher you point your noise up, the slower your plane is going to be going. Uh, compared to the horizontal where you're going to have to spend a little bit more time using your thrust and your boost and your brake to try to get that speed down a little bit. And then you'll set out while you'll show here in the video. So right now, here is a turn at roughly, you know, I started out about 225, 230 or whatever. Uh, and you can see how quick it turns when I'm staying relatively close to that 221 miles per hour. Yep, right. So there's 220. And you'll notice I start slowing down as I go into the turn. And do a little bit of a boost in there try to keep it back up to 220 and you see how fast that turns like i said keeping that optimum airspeed up is what you want to do to get those really quick turns um, so now i'm going to do a vertical here uh, i'm going up up to about 220 and then i flip over uh, of course i lose a lot of airspeed but the problem with the nice thing about it is a vertical climb or a vertical uh, flip like that is you make it up really quickly without using boost because you're using the uh, your potential energy uh, in doing so see that how fast that flips if you stay at that optimum airspeed so i'm going to boost up here a little bit 270 280 290 and then i'm going to go over my top and i'm going to try to get my turn going right at about 220 uh, i'm flipping back over so yeah and it, it takes a little bit of practice of course you you, you have to do the time and effort uh, to try to keep that uh, number uh, in your in your head and paying attention to what your speed is so now I'm doing the flaps extended with full boost and flaps 
and you know and you see there it takes a little bit longer to get around on it because I'm going faster than my optimum airspeed so while I'm gallivanting around here and not paying attention I actually stroll in here to the um, cap and uh, yeah I'm uh, getting shot at here so hopefully uh, th this is for the newer players just to kind of give you guys an idea uh, if you didn't know this already um, there is optimum air speeds to turn your fighter uh, your light fighter heavy fighter uh, anything altitude uh, energy fighter whatever there is a optimum turning speed that you want to you want to get at and that really comes down to is just spending the time making sure you look it up and know what the number is uh, and spending the time to learn how that works you know that uh, get, uh, trying to keep the optimum airspeed as you're doing your maneuvers uh, and you're fighting with your light fighter so just a real quick uh, little tip for you guys that uh, didn't know that or didn't know that maneuverability that's what exactly what it does so I got some more of these little uh, tips and tricks coming up here and uh, hopefully you guys uh, will stick around and watch them. Alright guys, back with the next part in the tips and tactics video. And I'm going to be flying with Iron Jaeger here and I'm just going to go over this because I see this way too many times um, in game. Uh, human pilots specifically, even the bots kind of got this figured out. I know the programming has gotten better. Um, but if you're playing a heavy fighter or an energy fighter uh, something like that uh, turning um, I, I don't get this why this is why this is something that you'd even think about um, doing a horizontal turn uh, when you have a light fighter on your tail is the absolute worst thing you can do why because you are giving the plane for example right here as I turn you're giving the enemy fighter a huge profile to shoot at it's all the wing surface, all the tail surface, uh, and of course the fuselage. So I'm going to be making a pass here with iron. Iron's in a BF-109, uh, and we're just going to kind of go at each other here. And I'm just going to make a pass at him in the first time here, just to give you, just kind of give you an idea uh, of why uh, giving your making a horizontal turn in one of these fighters, uh, heavy fighter, energy fighter. Um, multi-role whatever is a bad idea and, and you'll watch here you know I'm gonna go right by him and I'm gonna flip over and we're going to go into a horizontal turn and you see right here and you'll see see all the damage see all the uh, damage he's doing to my plane uh, with this horizontal turn he has that much surface area to just wreck me I, I don't even have a chance to really do much here and yeah that's what I'm talking about right here and I see it so many times uh, in puppy games uh, human fighters they'll make a pass past the aircraft and they automatically go into a horizontal turn and they give the broadside they give the profile of that aircraft to the enemy fighter which I love you know if I'm a light fighter and I see that that's just awesome I, I, I love seeing that it's so much easier to hit now if you would if I would have stayed running away from iron all they would have gotten to shoot at was you know you're shooting at a very thin uh, a very thin tail and a very thin wing and uh, just a little bit of the fuselage it's very hard to hit that target and if you know what I'm talking about uh, if you have a heavy fighter or something running away from you trying to shoot that small silhouette is not easy so we're gonna make another pass at the BF 109 here I go on by him and now you noticed here, uh, he, I did not turn, I did the horizontal. Uh, instead, I've picked up speed, um, and I'm trying to stay out in front of him. So now, instead of the horizontal turn, what you see me do here is flip up and over. So by the time he comes back at me, all he has is the, once again, the front of my plane. Uh, he doesn't get a silhouette, he do, or not a silhouette, he doesn't get a broadside, the silhouette, or whatever you want to call it. He doesn't get to that to shoot at me. All he gets is the front of my plane with my cannons. So we'll do this again. Up and over. And back at him. And now I'm once again right at him. And he has very little to shoot at. He's going to have to make that shot. Um, it's a lot harder to hit. Now you've watched the other videos about the heavy fighters. You know the basic one where I did it. Telling you about that buffer zone. How important it is. 
this is why it's very important to make that buffer zone so you're able to get out ahead of him uh, and make the turn so you're not giving him that silhouette of your plane you're not giving him that whole wing and fuselage and everything else so he's trying to shoot me at right shoot at me right now when he was in range he was trying to shoot me and was unable to you heard a couple pings on the plane yeah because there's not a whole lot to shoot at uh, like that so here we go flipping the vertical so by the time he gets here I've already got my guns to bear and he's shooting at my front of my plane real simple guys not hard uh, just do a little bit of time and effort in the training room uh, just to figure this out and I'm like I said I'm not picking on anybody or telling anybody they're doing it wrong but yeah if, if you're in a heavy fighter energy fighters same thing same way with multi rolls you have the speed do not give them your silhouette do not do the turn do not do the horizontal turn make that buffer zone go in the vertical and bring the plane around and over so they have to take you head on uh, and they have very little to shoot at other than the fact they're going to be uh, you know sucking cannon shells and bullets through their front windshield real simple thanks and i got a couple more up here for you guys to take a look at so uh, stick around all right guys back with another one and this is going to be and then i'm talking about specifically about how to enter um objectives uh and you and you i've talked about this in some other vids uh about entering an objective uh with bots um you don't want to be the first bot into an obj or first player first blue player into an objective whether it's red or white doesn't really matter the reason for that is, is if you do enter first, uh, AA will concentrate on you as well as whatever bot is in that objective point. So you'll see me here. I'm going to use these two GAs as essentially bait. Um, I know I got two, three P40s up here, and I got two GAs with me. And you're just going to see me here kind of uh, hang out here on the edge. One, because now that the GA is in there, uh, he's taking flak. And we have, and you've noticed now, all three P40s are after him. And it's just a simple job right now is to watching the rotation of those fighters uh, and pulling in behind them. Uh, I watched the rotation. I watched them spin around uh, and, and immediately go after my GA. Uh, what this does, it saves you the time and effort of flying around the objective trying to shoot down... Um, these planes if they're on the far side of the objective you're going to take a lot of damage flying the other side of the objective to shoot down um, defense fighters so by letting this these GAs go in first they have the HP they have the uh, durability to take that uh, they're going to go in first they draw off the AA fire and they also draw off the uh, defense fighters and just by watching the rotation of those planes I'm able to get right in on their tails and flip this cap relatively quick. Um, so we're going to do this again here. And this one's now got the uh, P-38Fs. Uh, you can use, and I'll stop here for a second here and I'll talk about what I'm talking about. You can, you, you can use the GAs or if you have a bomber. Bombers work really well for separating this um, objective up. Bombers will be up high, so that means the if they enter first, these heavy fighters will immediately try to zoom to deal with the bomber. If the GAs enter first, the heavy fighters are going to drop down to this level to deal with the GAs. Either and or works out better for you, um, especially if you're in a light fighter. It's not easy to get up there and, and have to deal with a heavy fighter at altitude. And being able to use these guys as bait, um, you know, Besides drawing off the AA, they're going to draw those heavy fighters down to a level where you can deal with them. Now, uh, most people don't know this. Heavy fighters do not uh, reward you with any more points than a uh, light fighter objective in the objective. So those P-38s are only still worth 40. Same way as the P-40s, only worth 40. Now, however, trying to get a P-38 dead... Uh, when there's light fighters in there is is just ridiculous. Why chase P-38s around? They're usually faster. They're usually at higher altitude. Uh, you're not going to get any more capture points by shooting them down. So, remember that. 
All right, so now I have the GA in here, and I'm just going to show you what I'm doing here. Now, this is for the objectives where you actually have soul heavy fighters. I'm going to immediately see now they've dived down here. Uh, they are going after my GA, which has brought them down to the level where I can deal with them. I'm going to wait for this one. Yep, there he goes. He turns into me. Um, I'm only at 1,500 feet. He's out of out of place. He shows me his broadside. A lot easier to hit when they can get the uh, silhouette of that aircraft. Uh, you know, the other part of the video that I was talking about. So, flip up and over. Uh, of course, about this time I get jumped by an actual red plane, so screw it. Uh, I'm going to shoot his dumb ass down. But you see what I'm talking about right here, right? You, you, you noticed how... You saw how I waited until the P-38s dropped altitude and got down low. Uh, so they're a lot easier to deal with uh, at the lower altitude than having to chase them up to the uh, their usual place where they hover, which is right around five or 6,000 feet. By using the GAs or uh, in, if you have to, um, you know, this, in this video, this part of the deal, I was specifically doing it to show you exactly why, what the heavy fighters are going to do. They're going to drop down. Normally, I would just ignore the heavy fighters and just go after the P-40s because they're a lot easier to deal with. Uh, but you see here, now if we go to a, uh, a uh, uh, command center that's only got heavy fighters, uh, let the GAs enter first, bring them down to your level, uh, and then work them over, uh, and you won't have to deal with them, at, with, them, with them at altitude. So just some real simple little trick and ta tricks right there, tricks and tactics, I should say, uh, of getting to dealing with with objectives uh, if you have to. So flip him up, flip him over, real simple. So, uh, random dude that was in, uh, wanted to join the, uh, wanted to join this training room, so I just brought him in, he's in the P-12. Uh, what's up, dude? And we're off. <laughs> I, I thought about shot, shooting him down, but no, nah, we're making a video here. So you, you get what I'm understanding. And same way if you got a bomber coming in with you, uh, you know, if the bomber's up high, he's going to draw off them heavy fighters, and you're not going to have to deal with them. So if he's drawing off the heavy fighters to the top, that means you can, you know, come down to the bottom and uh, start taking out the P-40s, uh, whatever the air defense fighter is at that time. So uh, they've dropped in here on my ME-265, and I have an IL, an IL with me as well. Uh, so that lets me get, bring them in here and... Take, start taking off some P-40s. They're going to be busy here, of course, trying to chase my uh, GA, uh, which lets me to work lets me work them over real easy. Real simple, guys. Uh, just something to remember when you're flying. Uh, objectives are a lot easier to take when you're not getting shot by AA or heavy fighters. Uh, you know, use your bots uh, to uh, your advantage. So, real simple. One more little trip and uh, tick, uh, uh, trick and tactic, tri yeah, tricks and tactics, and uh, that'll be next. Hey guys, back with the last part on the video, and we're going to talk about. Um, okay, first of all, there's some weird things going on, and I think this might have something to do with uh, war gaming. Might have changed the behavior of the bots. Uh, typically on this map, you would have saw both heavies go to the center, uh, along with the uh, ground attack planes. Um, in this one, we got kind of an odd split. The uh, heavy fighter went to the other direction. Okay, so here's the, I shouldn't say tip, well actually it is a tip, it's kind of a tactics thing is too, is generally if you are in a platoon or if you have another human pilot, you guys want to split up and go to different objective points. Why? Because it helps the bots turn the objective quicker. If you don't go to the objective, it takes the bots a significantly longer time to turn an objective. So, if you get a split like what we have here, uh, where the team, where the uh, planes have split and gone off in directions, and actually in this one, like I said, uh, we have three going middle and four going south. Uh, going with either and or will turn the objective quicker. Having that extra human pilot there makes a huge difference how fast you turn the objective. Now, it's still a little weird because I've tried this a few times. I've noticed in game uh, over the last, 
I don't know, maybe last month, week or whatever, uh, how the bots have been acting a little bit differently. Now, of course, in this, I'm usually running either warrior or veteran bots, which are the higher tier bots, uh, but they seem to be better and uh, they act differently. Um, this here, uh, this particular one here, uh, typically in the old video that I did on this, bots uh, tip that went through went to here were typically uh, GAs and heavy fighters. They would go to center. Uh, now you're seeing a little bit different, and I'm not sure if it was just uh, the weird play game or if I'm just noticing things. If anybody else notices anything, let me know, uh, I, and, and maybe we can figure out why they're acting a little bit odd. Um, but yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not. So back to the actual point we make here is when you split up and you're going to go with uh, one human to one objective and human to another objective what you're doing is is you're assisting those bots to turn those objectives if you just let the bots go by themselves a lot of times they won't turn it very fast it, it, it'll take it'll take them a little while uh, and you're not going to get the objective turned very quickly and you're going to lose out on those objective points so if you're in a platoon or if you have another human you know kind of make sure that uh, you notice which direction they're headed uh, and you don't go necessarily the same objective go with the slice of bots that are going to a, a different objective and you're going to turn objectives quicker uh, by going with them so that little little pa little little trick there for you guys to uh, think about uh, you can try it in game and uh, see what you think of it uh, so yeah um, this will be uh, part three of this whole series of uh, tricks and tactics, I guess you wouldn't call it. Tips and tactics, maybe that's a better word for it, uh, and how to get a little, to uh, win a little bit more uh, in this game. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I give you a good night. Or say good night. <laughs> Bye, guys.